Just to start off with, uh, you know, is it legal to make your own firearm? So, generally, the answer to that question is yes. A person can make their own firearm. You can have a homemade firearm for your, your personal uses. There's no problem with that. As long as you're not making something that's illegal to possess in the first place. So, if you're under a protective order or your state outlaws that kind of weapon or um, you're underage to possess that kind of weapon or, you know, you, you are a convicted felon and aren't allowed to possess firearms, period, making that firearm is going to be illegal, okay? It's also going to be illegal to produce a firearm that uh, is classified as typically illegal by the ATF, uh, the National Firearms Act, NFA, uh, such as like a short barrel firearm, short barrel shotgun, short barrel rifle, um, uh, explosive devices or destructive devices, I think is what they call it. Um, any other weapon that would qualify under that ALW uh, mm -hmm. definition, which is kind of outside the scope of today's topic. But uh, and, hey, I and, make a and side maybe note. silencer. I want to make a side note about you guys. We've been doing this for quite a while, and I come up with these topics. I mean, they're all over the board. And you guys have such a wide diversification of knowledge. You may not have the answer to everything, but you touched on everything. And you go seek it out, and it's like you can—you never come here without an answer. Yeah, well, I mean, anybody. I think uh, there's a plethora of uh, information, and sometimes there's a problem with that. There's way too much information for a lot of just uh, regular citizens to decipher. Which is why we've talked about there's way too many laws, over codification, mm -hmm. over regulation, proliferation of. Of, of regulations and so sometimes it's too much for people to digest um, I think that uh, that's why people like you that specialize in this field though people that are, are familiar with farms I think are, would be able to go on the ATF website and get a good idea though about what is and what is not legal now I don't obviously the ATF is going to overstate uh, their case in some instances I, I feel like they're pretty honest though in some of their statements when they say straight up we can't regulate this but, but in other times, I think they're being cautious when they say, you know, this is illegal or when they say probably, you better go and follow up and, and just see exactly what the specifics are mm -hmm. in that situation when you do go on the ATF website. Um, but you can go on there. I think, so the, 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 the things that really prompted this question were some recent uh, activities that are going on with 3D printers. And I was surprised because I haven't actually been on the ATF website um, in a while. So when I got this question, uh, remember last time, I think we did this uh, segment on transferring weapons, one or two segments last year. And I went on, we did a segment on, 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 on any other weapons or right. all other weapons, yeah. AOWs. And we showed some pretty neat stuff that were on the uh, ATF website, like the cigarette gun, yeah, cigarette no, just think about and it, the man. lighter gun and those things. And, uh, they didn't have the 3d printer segment up. When I was there last time, so this must be a, a big thing. It's uh, it must be kind of blowing up as far as what people are doing because now they have a whole a whole segment. I'm not and, very good at this. I'm really I'm not knowledgeable enough. But I hear things on this particular topic. I hear things. I heard like they couldn't send software to teach you how to to print 3D guns or something like that. That's why I'm asking the audience if you're familiar with this, please give us a call. Two five four six nine seven six six three three. So it's not only just the making it, but selling of the software to make it. I, I don't know. Well, I would not think that the software to to for knowledge about how to make a weapon I know, would be that would, that would be like brass knuckles unlawful. As a uh, again, I didn't even look look at that, but I just off the top of my head, and I wouldn't. I'm not giving a guarantee on this, but I wouldn't think that software, given software about how to make your own weapon, uh, would be unlawful. It would be just a DIY. Do, well, do well, it. Like I said, I'm ignorant to this. Do it. Do it yourself. I, I would think there may be some like copyright infringements, or maybe some. Uh, 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 trade secret mm -hmm. violations or something to that effect, but as just far as singing out with the ATF regulated, I wouldn't think that they would. However, I, I will say this: you know, 3D printers. You you cannot print anything that would be able to avoid basically a metal detector or would be able to avoid detection as a weapon. Uh, that's going to be unlawful under the United States Code, um, um, 18 USC 922P is going to tell you that you cannot. Uh, even possess or manufacture a weapon that's going to be undetectable by any kind of metal device or not detectable as the security exemplar by a walkthrough metal detector calibrated or operated by the security exemplar. So 
There's 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 more to that definition. <laughs> Only the government can do that. Right? Or wouldn't be inspected, <laughs> or would you wouldn't be able to find on inspection of an X-ray machine. So you're not going to be able to produce that with a 3D. But as far as like just a metal, a metal or any other kind of uh, weapon to to be used, uh, you're going to be able to, to to produce it on your own, make that on your own. So, but are you going to be able to sell that weapon? Um. So we, I'm just going to give a brief over, overview of the 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 again requirements for transferring a firearm you're going to have state regulation you're going to have regulations by the united states code and then you're going to have further regulations by the nfa and the atf okay and so you've got to realize you you can't be under a protective order just like what we said you can't be a felon you can't give a handgun or any kind of weapon to a person you think probably about to go commit a crime it's going to be probably unlawful if it's a handgun period, and then you may be an accessory or something if you know they're going to commit a crime. Uh, if it's a minor, we talked about transfer as a minor. I would say anytime you're going to transfer right to a minor, you just need to make sure that you have uh, some kind of written consent by the parent. I would also make sure that you have on there that it's going to be done for some other purpose than just a basic transfer, like going hunting or something, just to CYA, okay? <laughs> can, you actually, can you actually transfer it to the child? With a parent consent, I thought it had to be like ownership of the parent, and then the child can use it under supervision. Well, that, remember we we spoke about if you're if a child's going to be using a hand a, a weapon, oh, it right, wouldn't be right. readily discharging. Just transferring the firearm period to the uh, to the child. I would think you could transfer the char firearm to the child. It would just ha you would just make sure you have the parent's consent in writing. Okay. Um, and also know that there's problems too with a, with a child, uh, making a contract. They're not the age of majority. Right. We're talking under the age of 17. Do they have the capacity to enter a contract? You have all those, those issues, but I, I would still think that you can make a gift of the firearm to the child. Just make sure you get it in writing, uh, from the parent. You cannot sell though, just firearms in general for the purpose of being engaged in the business of selling firearms. Okay, and so if if you have made your homemade weapon and you intended that weapon to be for personal use and then you said, well, I don't really like this one, but my nephew likes it, I'm going to go ahead and sell it to him and then I'll make myself another one. I think that's okay. I think I think that's okay. Um, arguably, you're going to have to uh, get maybe a, a, a serial number or some kind of marking uh, through the ATF, I, I'm gonna. I actually wanted to go look that that aspect up. I've got I've got a note here from somebody who's been studying up on this, and um, they made a couple of comments to that point, and it was basically, I'm scanning through it here right now. It's not. It's good. To, it's good to have an identifier on your firearm. Period. Yes, but but it goes back to you though. If you if you uh, they're saying you have to register it or. The serial number and if you don't do that it's still an unmarked gun going from one person to the other that's what we were trying to figure out and so uh, once again everybody if you if you're building what they call these ghost guns or 80 percent guns and you've been doing some studying on it or research on it this is a great um, format right now to talk about it so give us a call 254-697-6633 but he's saying uh, most are unaware that blah blah blah, blah. There's nothing illegal about your gun as long as you can identify it's yours. And what he was also telling me was like when you're building the firearm, let's let's just talk about one of these ghost guns for Glocks. If you get all the information that you bought a barrel here and you bought the, the trigger mechanism here and you got the 80% lower. We're gonna head. get to that though. I wanna. I, I really am gonna get to that. I, I wanna. I wanna stick with what because because if if we have the foundational knowledge. That we know what we can do and what we can't do. I think it makes it easier to understand selling parts, and because the parts have a specific regulation. And so, can you? I, I think you've got no problem selling a firearm, transferring a firearm, and I don't think it's going to be regulated by the feds. There may be some specific little little regs here and there, but You're specifically but essentially, talking a ghost gun. Uh, well, a ghost gun, which is what it is, well, that's, one, the one, that's the 80%. The 80% doesn't have a serial number on it, because you can do, with the other no, normal guns that you just buy anywhere, I mean, yeah, a person could sell a gun. But it would be other. the same. So if it's an 80% weapon that you intended for personal use, 
Right, let's say if, if that qualifies as a weapon in itself, a ghost gun, eighty percent. No, it does not. But once you turn it, once you turn it into it, then they say it's for your personal use. So a weapon is defined as a receiver or the frame. Correct. Okay, so would does a ghost gun contain a receiver or frame? It is the receiver and frame. However, exactly. So I would think that it would qualify as a firearm under the, the under the the federal laws, and so transferring that would still qualify as a firearm. This is interesting. This can get people... So, really so, so, well, so 18, 18, 18 USC 921A3, the term firearm means any weapon, including a starter gun, which will or is designed to or may readily be converted to expel a projectile by the action of explosive. B, the frame, the frame or receiver of any such weapon. That is a firearm. That falls under the definition of a firearm. So the frame or receiver would therefore be a firearm under the United States Code. Once it's made to 100%. It does not say. It says a, any weapon that will or may readily be converted to, to expel a projectile. There's that definition. That's A. Then B says the frame or receiver of any such weapon. So the receiver, in my opinion, when it says frame or receiver, that tells me that that is a part. It doesn't have to be a complete weapon at that point. This reminds me of back in the day when you had your shotgun in the back of the window and you'd ask everybody, all these different law enforcement, hey, can I have my shotgun in the back window? And someone say no, or yeah, but it can't be loaded, or it's got to be for hunting purposes. This is one of those topics, I think, everybody's got a different opinion. It's a matter of about how you express yourself and how much information you have in the courtroom, who's going to win. But I'm not going to get on the radio and tell people that it doesn't apply. I would say that, I would say that the feds and even the state would say that the frame or receiver would mean in a firearm part. Once it's made to 100%. I don't see that that means 100%. That doesn't say anything but the frame or receiver. But there, there's, but when, unless I don't have good logic, I would think if they're selling an 80%er and you don't have to if wait. If it meant a full gun, why would they separate these into individual parts, especially since it says a firearm, muffler, or silencer? Because that's obviously not a full weapon as well. All right, listen, you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Tell your brother to give us a call. 254-697-6633. I know you got a brother or an uncle out there who's doing this. Have him give us a call. 254-697-6633. We want some help on this one. Okay, what else you got? And so, yeah, I mean, I, I would think that the frame or receiver would meet this definition of firearm because it says any weapon. That would be the weapon. To me, that would be the complete weapon, but not necessarily because it says which will, which doesn't mean that it is, okay, which will, words mean things, okay, or is designed to or may readily be converted, right, to expel. See, now, that's, that's the comment that I would pick up on. Which is what I've bolded right here. You see that. I have it bolded, underlined, yes, you italics. <laughs> may readily be converted, may readily be converted to expel a projectile by the action of an explosive, okay? Okay, yeah, and okay, so, I'm so, so, I'm following. So that's that definition. That would be, to me, is talking about a completed weapon a we or a weapon to be completed. completed. Okay, and then we have just the frame or receiver, which is talking about those two parts. So a frame wants... or a frame or receiver, if you, if you meant the full weapon, it would say a frame or receiver as part of an entire weapon. So the people's perception out there who are getting 80% guns thinking that it's, it's good to go would go into a courtroom with you and probably lose because of that terminology right well, now. Well, but again, that's why I said if we have the foundational understanding of what's legal, it really doesn't matter because if we can make our own firearm, we can make a frame or receiver. If we can transfer a firearm, we can transfer a frame or receiver. Okay, as long as it's not one of these things that qualify as, you know, one of those prohibited devices. And I, and I would argue, too, that the... Uh, that uh, as far as the machine gun is concerned, if we look at uh, and and look and let's look at uh, a 27, the, the federal regs, the 27 CFR 478.11. Okay, it's going to define handgun as any combination of parts, any combination of parts from which a firearm described by A can be assembled. Any combination of parts from which a firearm described by paragraph A can be assembled. Okay. Any combination of parts. And then you have the very same definition in 27 CFR 47911, which is talking about right the, the machine guns and the, and the AOWs and 
the destructive devices. But but 27 CFR 478.11 talks about firearms and ammunition in general. Okay, and so this is talking about what can be regulated. If you look at to the definition under the United States Code of Machine Gun, you're going to see that uh, the term shall also include the frame or receiver of any such weapon, any part designed or intended solely or exclusively or in combination with parts designed or intended <laughs> for use to convert a weapon into a machine gun, any combination of parts from which a machine gun can be assembled if such parts are in possession or under control of a person. Okay, so I think that those... That's a lot of wind power. I think, I think that uh, the handgun, right, and the machine gun, and the destructive device is essentially the same language as the machine gun. I think the handgun, destructive device, and machine gun language uh, hit the nail on the head as far as, as well as the, the firearm, any combination of parts designed, redesigned, or intended for using and assembling or fabricating a firearm silencer. I think, <laughs> I think those things, I think those hit the nail on the head. So I think... I think you could have an argument as an as as a defense counsel in 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 aggravating your point of view that frame or receiver could possibly mean with a completed firearm since it doesn't use as in depth language as the handgun, the firearm frame or receiver part for the machine guns and the silencer and the destructive device. But twenty seven CFR four seven eight point eleven as well as the four seven nine point eleven talk about firearm frame or receiver which talks about which provides housing for the hammer bolt or breech lock or firing mechanism and which is usually threaded as it forwards a portion to receive the barrel. Does that mean that it's actually connected to these parts at that time? I want to show everybody in the video here what people are thinking right now. Their eyes are going like this in their head. They're like, what, well, what can you do for CYA? We got all this. How do we CYA all this? <laughs> well, I think... Uh, um, some of the points you point out to me before the show, you know, uh, always good to to mark your firearm. I would say that I uh, think he made a comment about. Keep talking. I'm gonna look this up. He kind of made a comment as to how to mark it here. But, and and uh, you also, you know, a paper trail. Uh, the purposes for uh, creating the weapon, the purposes for uh, transferring the weapon, how the weapon was transferred. Um, you know the the number of weapons that you've created with your 3d printer okay because you know obviously at some point the more weapons you create versus you know how many of those that you've created have you sold is going to go into the question of whether or not you're engaged in the business That's right. of selling firearms so you know you 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 create a couple couple handguns you know or weapons whatever period firearms period and and you and you get rid of those you sell them you transfer them don't know that that makes you engage in the business but i would you know i would be careful if you're getting up into the range of half a dozen to even a dozen and you've ended up selling you know over half of them to other people i think now you're, it's going to be questionable whether you're trying to act as a dealer without a license now if you're a dealer and a license manufacturer and license you don't have these problems we're talking about people that right. don't have a license let's talk to about let's do these things let's swing this over now you're carrying one of these 80 percent guns that you built and you're licensed to carry and we get pulled over how does, how does that come in the mix what kind of problems are we going to have there you think if you get pulled over with an incomplete weapon no it's complete now but it has no serial number on it cop looks at it no serial number how do we work that one out? Any any words? Of I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't understand how the police officer would uh, would would charge you with anything unless you said that you bought it from an out of state. I don't understand why an, an out of state uh, transfer or right. It's 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 possible that if you're transferring it out of state, in some situation, you may have to go through right a, a federal firearms licensee. Okay, but if you're, I mean, how are they going to know if you're transferring in state? It's your own personal handgun. I mean, there's no, there's but no. That, why does an officer not know that Penal Code forty six zero three five isn't anything to worry about unless there's a sign posted? They still arrest you sometimes because you're. Uh, that's well, no. I mean, we can we can sit here and talk about all the wrong things police officers do. <laughs> I don't I mean, do some that. of them, some of them that. are, some of them, you know, are, I think, just out of caution for the police officer. Some are based on you know safety issues. Some questioning is routine questioning. See, that's, which what we, I was getting about, that's what I was getting about that shotgun. Back in the day, it was like, you didn't know what to do with a shotgun or a rifle. Can I have it in my vehicle or not? And then you got CJ, got arrested, and everybody knew. And now you know you can carry a, a rifle in a non-threatening manner without a problem. 
this is what I'm getting at here. Everybody's got their own little opinion based on this. I'm trying to see if we can't find this is how it works. This is the rules. These are the boundaries. But right now we're like all over the place. Here's what I would say. If, if you could say it's my own personal handgun, you, you made it. You're not going to get in trouble. Uh, there's no reason for you to get in trouble. You could say that you inherited the weapon, okay, through a... Uh, intestate succession or my dad that's my that's my grandpa's gun okay that's you, like what there's you, nothing they can do in that situation what if you found it can you say that a lot of people say that when they shoot somebody i just found it and went off <laughs> I, I would i would stray away from telling police officers that you found a, a lost or stolen <laughs> uh, a weapon or abandoned weapon okay um i i would say in those two situations that i just said that you're in the crystal clear um if if you just purchased it from Uncle Joe, you're probably in the clear too, uh, is, even if it doesn't have a, 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 a some kind of marking, it probably should. Uh, and and we had some argument, which I'm going to go look and I'll, I'll, I'll update on the next show whether it's absolutely required, absolutely required, whether we have to have another serial number updated by ATF or something just on a, right, a arm's length transaction of citizens re residing in the same county in the same state right even if they're family members i i would argue that you don't but there's some language saying well, that here's you do. I'll, I'll, I'll give a i'll here's give an update on the next too, show though. for that this is just chitter chatter here but here's another scenario let's say somebody's got one of these guns and they want to do a trade-in because they like something that's on my shelf better and all of a sudden you know i'm digging it the gun's got value but i'm thinking how the heck do i mark this in the book you know acquisition disposition type of book how do i do that so it kind of brings up those questions too well and we t we spoke about last time uh uh told him definitely come by your shop right to talk to you about the bill of sale and the requirements you you want to make sure you have in writing that the person is not mentally ill that you you have in their language saying i'm competent to purchase a firearm i'm not under a protective order i'm not and that's a 4473 form that's what I, I, i'm not i would recommend that too ross Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a firearm and you want to sell it to somebody else, you can go ahead and do it. It's not a problem. However, there could be problems down the road. You never know. So the safest way to do it, the safest way to get it out of your system, your blood, your, your paper, paper trail, is to give it to people like me, uh, FFL, because once you give it to me and I log it in my book, it's my gun now. Okay, You just got disconnected from the gun because it's not leaving my shop unless somebody fills out another 4473 and they go through all the checks that Ross had just mentioned here. So if that's the way you want to do it. That's you know, You're paying a $25 transfer fee. That's what I would do. Uh, somebody may be more or less, whatever. But find somebody who will do that and get it out of your system or your paperwork. And that's the best way to do it. I, I would say that that's worth every bit of $25. It's of some insurance that right. uh, is priceless in case that person today if that person goes and uses that firearm if you think somebody's not in a way that you know some people have made this country look awful in the way that they've used firearms i would think that uh, it's very likely that you're going to be questioned about why did you transfer this power on that person and so 25 dollar fee in my opinion for get, transferring that especially especially if it's somebody that's not family you know, if you're transferring that to, to nephew, so and so, I don't think there's going to be any problem. I would I would still say it's a good idea, but I could understand why somebody wouldn't. But if you're transferring it to just a friend mm -hmm. or some other independent person that's not related or affiliated by marriage or some at least some kind of way to you, that's the smartest thing to do is to go through somebody like yourself and to to get that all documented and record. And there's not going to be anything that they're going to be able to do because all the proper channels were put into place to transfer that firearm legally um yeah I will, I will say this building your own firearm has a good feeling to it i mean you've got there's so many parts out there that you can customize this gun to exactly how you want it from the looks to the ergonomics of it to the quality of the materials um night sights no night sights adjustable sights Whatever you want, you can build this gun. So it's, it's a very enjoyable thing to do if you're into that kind of stuff. And it's not really, people get this perception sometimes, some people who are not familiar with it, that you've got to do a lot of milling. Well, in the 80% guns, yeah, there's some clipping and milling you got to do, but it's very minimal. They give you jigs to do that. But all of the other things are just slipping parts, dropping parts. So it's a lot of fun. That and way. a lot of people, um, I, I wanted to touch on another uh, issue 
a lot of people try to convert their rifles into pistols, pistols into rifles. Yeah. As far as rifle into pistol is concerned, that's going to be regulated by the ATF. Okay, that's you're going to have to go and get that register, get permission to do that. I think it's a form one. Uh, in an application before you build any gun like that before you convert before, before you do yeah, a right. conversion like that Gotta I think with the uh, mm-hmm. with the uh, pistol into the rifle you just need to go check okay it's different yeah, it's there, different it's different uh, but it could it could fall under a regulated weapon you just you just need to be careful when you're doing those conversions that's so right. I, that's what I would tell you to do if you're doing a rifle into a pistol that's going to fall under regulation from the feds. Okay, if you're doing a um, pistol into a rifle, rifle, you still better go check. You got to check because sometimes those receivers are registered as a pistol receiver and it's going to go that way. And nobody sh- nobody should know, but if it ever gets to that point, there could be a potential problem. I'm not a master at that, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. I'm a shooter. I'm not a uh, reader of black and white law. So, I mean, I know most people when I have a question, I'll go look it up. But right now, I can't do it off the top of my head. All right, look, uh, time's running out. Let's re- do a real quick recap of what the most important point that you think is, and then let's tell everybody how they can get a hold of your office. Can you make your own firearm? Yes, you can. It cannot be something that's prohibited by law from having in the first place, and if it's not prohibited, you can make it. Uh, can you make it with a 3D printer? Yes, just be aware that you cannot make any weapon that can uh, uh, is, can avoid detection by you know security devices as a, you know, as a firearm itself. Uh, Cannot make any kind of weapon that would be a machine gun or, or any kind of thing like that. Can you sell firearms? Yes, you can sell your firearms. It's not a problem, uh, but you cannot be engaged in the business of selling firearms without a license. What would you consider that to be engaged in the business? Of how frequent, how often, how many? We often talk about fact questions on here, and that's what I'm saying. That's going to be a fact question for the jury, and that's what I said. If you if you sold if you made one or two and you sold one or two, you're probably not going to have an issue. But if you're getting into the area of half a dozen or to a dozen weapons that you've made and you sold half of those or so, I think now you better really ask yourself, should I get a license? Because you probably need one. You're going to start looking like you're dealing firearms. Yeah, I know. Okay, and so you need to <laughs> at that point probably consider getting a license. I'd say definitely consider getting Y'all, a license. But for all of you in the know, you know why I'm laughing. So pay attention to that. Okay, and then uh, making and selling firearm parts, okay, I think you could make a part just like you can make your own gun without yeah. there being a problem. No could you sell the the parts? I'm assuming it's the, it's the same law. Could you? Yes, you can make a part and, and sell it if you're not engaged in the business. But could you, if you're engaged in the business, could you still sell an 80% firearm? My opinion is if it's a frame or receiver... <laughs> I would consider that a firearm, and I, there may be people who disagree with me, but you know, caution that is, says that is a you better very, get a license. That's a very big point you're making, man. If, if it was to get seven like that, the way you're saying, that a lot of people got a lot of challenges on their hand because there's a lot of eighty percent guns out there. But I see exactly why you're saying what you're saying. And I know that a lot of people disagree with me, but I'm just telling you, I'll be on the safe side. And I mean, how? I mean, well, look, if we got a scale, I think a lot of people look at their bullet points up to this point. From knowing you, you have a tendency to go from this point all the way to that point, and you cover all the gamuts. That's why you come up with your your decisions. You don't come up with your decision decision with a half read policy. You read the whole thing, figure out where it's all coming from, and then make your decision. I see it all the time. Some people don't do that, and that's why they'll, they'll argue your point. I, I I just would think that if you could get the license, you you should get it. If you're selling the the frames or parts like that, there's no reason not to. Ladies and gentlemen, this segment's uh, brought to you by Copley and Dodd Craig's Law Firm. And thank you, Rick. And uh, we always have a pleasure you being here. Ross, tell everybody how to get a hold of you. Uh, 105 East Main Street here in Cameron. That's where my primary office location is. You can call me at 254-605-4140. That's 254-605-4140 if you want to schedule an appointment right in Bryan College Station or Houston. Uh, also, you can email me. We love questions about the show, uh, gun issues, uh, safety issues, inspection issue, that. investigations. We get a lot of questions, but they don't want to call the show. Don't be bashful. We don't bite. Right, and, and just if you if you do email me some questions, like I said, we love to talk about the issues and advance the issues. Just leave your phone number because I can't always respond by email. So just make sure you leave your phone number at Benton at Watson dot legal. That's my name, Benton at Watson 
dot legal. All right. All right, Ross, man. It's always great talking to you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, guys. We'll see you on the other side.